Hello everyone. A couple of years ago, I bought a, uh, a Remington 783 that had uh, a Savage type screw-on barrel on it. And I was wanting to kind of up my game a little bit, so I had bought a heavier barrel for it uh, from a aftermarket manufacturer that uh, I was hoping would, would do better. And uh, actually, it did it did pretty damn good. Uh, the barrel I chose to go with was um, from Excalibur, and they make these little uh, pre-fit barrels, basically, for the things. Uh, and it has a nut. A lot of people will call these a nut barrel. You know, we can basically screw this into your action. And once you get your, your depth with your go and no go stuff, you just simply lock down the nut. So there's no gunsmithing involved after after you get to that point. This is a spare barrel for that uh, 243. I've got uh, a thousand rounds run through the, that thing now. Um, I've run a bore scope in there, it still looks pretty good. But with the wait times we have nowadays to get a new barrel, um, I figured I'd go ahead and order one. They had a sale. Uh, I think I ordered this uh, on Thanksgiving, and um, and I and I finally finally was able to get this thing. So it's just going to sit around. I'm just going to keep it for when that barrel decides to finally not shoot worth a darn, and then I'll put this one on there and uh, get it in world. The nice thing about these barrels is the fact that you don't really need a gunsmith to do anything with them. You can do this stuff at home if you've got a, a good vise with some barrel barrel clamping capabilities, maybe an action tool or something. Um, but that's kind of where, where you're going to end up with if you're doing a, a, a barrel with a nut on it. The issue uh, Nowadays, you know, we're trying to up our game a little bit to uh, get more accurate shooting rifles and barrels. One of the places you definitely want to go for sure. Um, with the way things are nowadays, with all the components, even even barrels, it takes a while to get. So we've had some orders out for a while for for some for several barrels. Uh, I did get that one. And uh, we also got this this thing today in the mail, and this is also from Excalibur Barrel and Manufacturing Company. And uh, I've been really kind of waiting for this one. I'm also waiting for another one. I got another one on order for that other chassis sitting over there. But you know, you just gotta you just gotta wait until they get it to you. Um, I've talked to my gunsmith. He's pretty well slammed up with his business. So I don't really have a lot of option option there. Yeah, I know there's a lot of barrel manufacturers out there that make nice barrels. And I know there's a, a lot of them nowadays that are jumping on this pre-fit bandwagon. This one is actually for a uh, Remington 700 style receiver. And it looked like that one was about $400. The reason we uh, chose to go with a nut barrel instead of a shouldered barrel for this rifle it was mostly because of um, you know, the issues we're having with a gunsmith to have time to chamber it um, 
finding a good, trustworthy gunsmith is always a, a plus. And here we are. Brand new 26 inch stainless barrel. Chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. If you do go the route of getting one of these barrels, there's a couple of things you can do when you have a blank barrel in your hand. Check, like checking your suppressor. I'll screw that on there and I can actually look down the barrel. And I don't see that suppressor at all. So I know I'm, I'm good there. Or a muzzle brake. If you got a muzzle brake on her, you just simply just look down the barrel. And you shouldn't be able to see any of that. And I don't. And that screws on there nice and fits up nicely. So that's one less thing to worry about. Another little trick that I learned on the, on the internet uh, when you have a barrel like this in your hand. Uh, I was watching one of Eric Cortina's videos when he was interviewing Jack Neary. And he was talking about how you can check your where your lands are on on your barrel pretty pretty nicely with one of these you can basically take a uh, sized case this size in this case it is a 65 grade more lapua brass and you can drop it in there now it'll run down and set on its shoulders you know clean it out make sure you don't have any fuzzy bunnies in there or anything and you can take that measurement with your comparator tool and measure base to shoulder. Write that number down. Then you can take a bullet. In this case, we're going to use a uh, burger 144 grain hybrid, and you can seat it into your case. Let me get my little seating die out here. Now this one I've got zeroed out for for the other bullets we were shooting here. I'm going to open this thing up some. And we're going to seat one of those 6.5 bullets. Now I can take this round and drop it in there and see if it touches. And that's actually shouldered pretty good. So I need to back this thing out a little more. Let's grab another piece of size brass here. Check it out. It plunks down pretty good. We're going to take one of our 144 grain burger hybrids and we're going to seat it in there. we've got our bullet seated we can simply just drop it in there and I push I push that down to its shoulders and I can't I physically have to move it to get it to come loose so that's in the lands so now I can take my little dial indicator here and start backing it down. Seat it down to that. Try it again. I can still feel it catching. 
run it down a little more seat it down drop it in again I can still feel it catching not much that means it's in the lands because that's what's holding it run it down a little more where am I at here seat it down drop it in again If there's any there, I can barely feel it. Let's run it down another thousandth of an inch. And that just comes right up. So that is no longer on the lands. Now we can take our, our bullet comparator for the 6.5 and measure base to ogive. and write that number down. So when this thing gets chambered up, I now have those two numbers and I can basically subtract the difference and I know what it is from my shoulder to the ogive. So once, once our, we get our headspace in their set, and I know, know what that headspacing is, all I have to do is seat the bullet accordingly, and I know exactly where the lands are on this barrel. And I will put those on my records, and I thought that was a neat little trick. Like I said, I did that with the 243, and it worked out pretty good. But you have to be able to kind of get at, at your round to be able to lift it to, to make sure there's nothing nothing hanging hanging on it so neat little trick well if you've made it this far through the video I thank you the reason uh, with the Excalibur barrels um, Back when I was looking for a barrel for that 243, I got on the internet. I was just looking around and I, and I ran across these guys and I figured, you know, I'll give them, give them a try. Uh, I got the barrel on sale. Didn't take that long to get it. Screwed it on the rifle. I actually had my gunsmith put it on her for me. And it, it shot pretty damn good. I, I was actually rather rather impressed with it. So I didn't have a problem with uh, buying another one and trying another one. Um, this barrel here is for that uh, 65 Creedmoor of ours on that Bagara that uh, I wasn't real impressed with the way it shot. Um, it shot under an MOA so it was it fell within you know the guarantee basically of of that rifle but that still wasn't what we were looking for so we're gonna give this one a try. Uh, this is a uh, 26 inch stainless barrel it's uh, that 5R uh, rifling in it um, uh, hopefully this thing will set up nicely. I've got some uh, tools order. We already have a uh, barrel vise. I'm waiting on an action wrench and some go go no go gauges for this thing. But we're going to get that set up on that bagar and hopefully that thing will shoot near as good as the uh, 243 did. Uh, this year we're also uh, working up another another build and we're using a custom custom action. This is from uh, Defiance, and there again, I'm waiting on waiting on parts for that. I've got a, got a chassis for it, uh, probably 
going to be in seven millimeter. I won't say exactly which one, but uh, new new dies, uh, new mandrels, new stuff like that. We're getting set up on too for it, and uh, hopefully I can use that for a competition rifle. I'm still on waiting lists and checking several times a day trying to find primers and powder. Uh, I'm still having issues trying to get enough of that to, to do some good. But I just wanted to kind of let you know uh, some things are getting rebarreled and uh, we've got some good content coming up this year. Hopefully uh, things will go off with a bang. We'll catch you next time.